Oh, so there's people listening to us right now? Yeah, we about to, yeah. Well, not, they wasn't listening to us earlier. I'm jumping off. Is this a needed suicide? I hope my parachute don't let me down. I hope I get the fly. I don't know why. Why I feel like I gotta die to be alive. I don't know why. It feel like people are standing still with no desire. I'm on a wire. Wobbling back and forth. The balance clown. I won't be happy. If I'm not moving forward, then send me down. My vibration for eternity will continue to come around. So I gotta do this right. I gotta live. I gotta. So I get this, uh, I, I get this thing from my, from my, uh, from my uh, lawyer telling me about the address. He says, it's possible that I inadvertently sent you the wrong address to send the payment. I believe you sent the payment, sent the check already, but I'm going to resend the address to you. Everything's the same except for the word Hazel, I think. The zip code was correct for the new location, so I hope it will be sent. Otherwise, there could be a delay. Bro, I sent this I sent this mug fifteen hundred dollars. Oh my. That that's what I'm saying. I I, I sent this dude fifteen hundred dollars. For him to come back to tell me that the address that I sent it to was the wrong address? Oh no. Nah. Mm -hmm. I got a fifth I got a fifteen hundred dollar certified bank check. Coming in. Coming to, yeah. Yeah. Coming to come coming to an address that somebody could possibly sign off on, right? Mm -hmm. No, nah, see, baby, because I've been pulled up on the postman. Be sat out be done sat outside with a lawn chair just waiting at the mailbox like oh. um i know i don't live here but you got my money oh my God. <laughs> this is and this is up in this is up in michigan too man this hey that's crazy hazel park michigan 48030 he gave me motherfucking oak park motherfucking like that Oh, how you missed that? That I, I'm. That's what I'm. It, it says right here, Oak Park, Michigan. But it's the same. It's the same zip code, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's the same zip code with the PO box. So, do you think that? Uh, do you think that being that it's the same post office box? But it's a different city from Oak Park to Hazel Park, but it's the same zip code. You you think the post office would catch that? I mean, I would hope so. I'm not sure though. <sighs> Shit, crazy. Yeah, that is insane. It, it, that that that's crazy. I, I I don't even think. I, I don't even think that's uh, should. Should I say that's like good business? Maybe. I mean, you you give me the the address you wanted me to send it to. I, I send it back. I say, good morning. I sent you the check. You should have it this week. Uh yada 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 yada. Uh he he then sends it and says, We changed our mailing address fairly recently. And somebody sent us a check by certified mail two or three months old to our old address. Laugh out loud. Bro, that's nothing to be <laughs> laughing about. What the fuck? That's, that's definitely not funny. That's not funny. And you said this is a lawyer? This is a lawyer. Right. Oh, tripping like, uh -uh, baby, go get your money back and fire him. This, this is a lawyer. So... He said, hopefully, we won't have that problem here. What you mean, hopefully? We're not supposed to have it now. Yo, this is, number one, this is $1,500 to put your ass on retainer so you right. can take care, so you can take care of the situation, you know, you take care of, you know, my situation. For you to turn back around and tell me that, oh, my bad, 
it's the wrong address. Yeah, no. Uh, it's 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 Hazel Park instead of instead of Oak Park. Sound like you just said that check this baby mama or something like that. Oh my god! Uh-uh. So that means that I gotta call. I, that means I gotta call up my bank uh-huh. and possibly let them know that there's a there's a possibility of you know of oh, this this is crazy I, you know what i gotta call him tomorrow i, I really do because that yeah yeah that's that's not cool number one that that's definitely not cool and number two and he's laughing about it. that's just not that's unprofessional that's not professional that's, yeah it's not professional at all man so so yeah, what's up everybody? Welcome to the Lockout Man Podcast Show. We're reparking politics with all our guests tonight. And I am your humble host, Lockout Men. And today's guest is Snack Sized Trucker. I definitely got to turn my headset down. I'm I'm using a different headset, and this bad boy boosting like a mug right here, man. <laughs> Jeez, I mean, I hear I, I I hear you loud and clear, but I you I usually over there. huh? So you about to bust the eardrum over there? <laughs> I mean, I usually use my other set, but being that I'm at home right now, I got my I got my Sennheisers on. I like I I like these like 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 real real like them, but my my bare dynamics you know they they fit comfortable around you know they fit real comfortable so so okay. snack size just how, how you pronounce your name because see i'm about to i'm about to beat your name up like muhammad ali over here i'm just letting you oh know. gosh um you talking about my real name or my ig name no nah, your ig name is snack size trucker we we about to yeah. we about to touch on that in a minute but your real, real name, is, name is jeronica Ger- it's just like jeronica yeah. like 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 Geronimo. <laughs> oh, god. oh my God! You don't understand how long I've heard that. But yes, yeah, like Geronimo. <laughs> Geronica B. That that's not. Well, what's that TV show that used Veronica Mars? Yeah. So instead oh, just, of instead okay. of the V, instead of the V, you replace the V with a J. Exactly. See, you get it. Exactly. I got it. I got, like, exactly. I got it. I got it. There we go. I got it. I, I know I get it. You know. So Geronica B. So so Geronica the truck driver. Where are you uh where where you hail from and when uh where where you hail from and what you it, this is life before trucking by the way. Uh where you hail from and what you was doing before you got into the trucking game. Oh, child. Um, I'm from Thomasville, Georgia. It's like a little small country town. Oh my like God! 30. Why, why, why all the uh, all all the females, man? Y'all, Georgia. y'all just I, I don't get it. Not <laughs> right, child. Go ahead. I don't get Georgia. it, man. <laughs> all the ladies. <laughs> all the ladies. All the ladies that I talk to. Ten, uh, I say about eighty five percent of you guys are from Georgia. Like, hold on, was y'all? Well, let me ask you this: Was you was you born and raised down in Georgia, or did you or did you move to Georgia? Oh, baby, no, I'm a I'm a peach. I'm I'm collard green, cornbread, uh, cornbread fed around here. <laughs> Damn it, man! Yeah, I was I was born and raised in Thomasville. Okay, okay. Thomasville, Georgia. Uh both your parents? Uh my mom's actually from New Jersey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my pops is he's definitely from um the area. I, to be honest with you, he from he from some little country town in Georgia. I just don't know which one it is. <laughs> All right. Yo yo your parents, they they still together though, right? Absolutely not. Those Ooh. people, oh gosh, they can't get along. <laughs> Well, they they did they 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 didn't take they they didn't take their particular ways until after you got of age, right? Oh no, they, honey, listen. I'm listening. <laughs> it was in and out throughout my entire upbringing, but I mean, you know, 
they officially split. I want to say I was like 14, 15. All right, so you 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 was a little you you was a little bit of a of of age to 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 understand the dynamics of what was going on at the time, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So how how did you feel about that? Like you know your 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 pops, your mom splitting up. One of them. One can of I them. can I can I say can I say um hope on here? Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. My dad was a hoe. You know uh, what I'm saying? He, he was a Rolling Stone, huh? Yeah. We I got like I have <laughs> six. I have five siblings, and only three of them, only two of them, came from my mom. So that should explain. How rolling? How how much of a rolling stone he was? So when my mommy left, I was like, "You do you, girl." Damn it, man. So <laughs> I was he, not mad. <laughs> was, was he was he a truck driver? He had to be a truck driver. No, he was just a hoe. <laughs> <laughs> I love him to death, but I mean, the truth is the truth. Facts is facts. My baby, my daddy just was. He was just such a hoe. He just couldn't. He couldn't get it together and mommy wasn't having it so she was like i'm out <laughs> i hear you i hear you man she's she's the old oh man i mean the, okay listen listen I, I, i'm 52 all right well I, i'll be 52 you know i i i i you know i i i, I jump on you know jump ship and you know cheat it you know what I'm saying? I, I admit it. I admit it. I'm a man. I, 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 I cheated. But see, I am old enough now to realize that if I was just took my time to to rectify the situations that was in my in my relationship, then I probably would not be in the situation that I'm in or that I was right. in or that I'm in now. Right. Yeah. So, um, you, uh, you know, I, I guess I can't give, I, 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 I guess I can give a little bit of advice, but then again, I guess I can't because, you know, a man going to do what a man going to do. You know, exactly. Okay. Like, okay, let me tell you one time is, is forgivable. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You, you work through it, you get over it, you move on. You, you try not to do it no more, but you do you, you <laughs> I mean, you got three kids outside of your relationship at all at different, you know, different stages, different ages and stuff like that. Baby, you a repeat offender. And I just, and you just can't keep going through that. You said he was a repeat offender, huh? I'm just saying, like, no, we're not dealing with that. We're not going to say, oh, I forgive you multiple times. No, I'm not Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yo, 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 your father wasn't a truck driver, so... Mm -mm. This this must be like like the 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 neighborhood chicks or what what are we talking here? This was not neighborhood chicks. These were um uh from the way it was explained to me because when all this was happening I was younger. Um it was just basically females he was dealing with prior to meeting my mom that he just didn't let go of mm. after he met her. Um you know, so it was like it. It wasn't just like random people. It was people he had already known before, because they met in Kentucky at Job Corps. Okay. So, um, when she she got pregnant with me, so she moved to Thomas. You know, to be with her man and all that good stuff. You know how love is. You know, make you do some crazy stuff. Right. Right. Um. So you know what I'm saying? She, my mommy, like first of all, big Scorpio energy. I'm gonna just say that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> For all the people that's listening that's into uh, astrology, you know exactly what I'm talking about here. Big Scorpio energy. First of all, she's very competitive. She's very much spoiled. She's very much, I get what I want, when I want, how I want, you know, all of that good stuff right there. So when it came to my dad and his cheating ways, she saw it more as like a competitive sport because mm. she was just like, you know, <laughs> none of y'all got nothing on me. And he just being silly, basically. Like young, I mean, it was like young, stupid love back then from the way it was explained to me. I got you. I got you. All right. Yeah. All right. So uh, how how long have you been driving? How, how long have you been a truck driver? 
I'm a rookie. I'm you know I've been doing this for like six months. Six months. Okay, so before you again before you got into trucking, man, well, why uh what you was doing before then? I was the forklift operator for like a month. <laughs> God. Okay. Okay. And before that, I was a direct sales agent at an insurance company. <laughs> how, how long you been down with that gig? Uh, about two years. Oh, okay. So we got so so we got some longevity going on right now. So, all right. So before we get into you know the you know into the trucking part of things, yo, your name. You know, I, I pull up yo. I pull up your IG. I, I think that's where I found you at. Or uh, mm-hmm. how I, how how did we um how how did we uh come come together? We 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 did we come together through IG? Yes, we did. Um, I think I posted a video or something right when I uh, started my YouTube channel. And I was letting everybody know that I was starting it, and then oh my god! <laughs> but um. I was uh, I posted a YouTube channel like a YouTube video when I was uh, when I started my YouTube channel and you hit me up. Mm-hmm. Then um, IG. Yeah. Oh my God, these pictures look rough. See, this is boredom at its best. <laughs> <laughs> you say you you say boredom at its best right here on on on, on, yes. I, on IG the snatch size trucker. I, I need to know where that I, I need to know where the name come from now. I mean, you okay, know, so because, don't you know, laugh. Snack, snack right. size, you know what I'm saying? You know, I'm a man, and and coming from a man's point of view, you know, when you, you know, say sexual has everything when it comes to women. No, it's not sexual. Mm. <laughs> mm. Okay. <laughs> no, the name snack size trucker came about because I'm four eleven. Yeah. So that's, I'm like real live snack size at this guy. Like, okay, okay, wait, 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 wait. You you four eleven? How the hell is you driving a truck? Oh, here we go. <laughs> how, how the hell is you driving? I, can you see over the steering wheel over there? Yes, I can. I can touch the pedals, all that. <laughs> man, you 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 the the seat must be all the way to the floor, man. What's up? No, you, it's you, not. Hey, now don't. Hey, listen, 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 listen. Uh, look, look. Don't don't take this the wrong way. Don't take this the wrong way. And I I I, I like me I, I like me a snack size too. Don't get me wrong. But you you you're not driving that motherfucker in a in a booster seat, are you? Absolutely not. <laughs> like you hire gangster just then. No. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> oh man! So hold on, tell me the story. How how did you how how did how did you uh, you know how and why did you seek uh, seek a career as a truck driver? I'm not even gonna flex with you. It was the money. Like it was. I had no desire to drive trucks. My brother actually um, started driving trucks a year before I even got my license. And um, it was, and I I was intimidated because the trucks are big, and I uh, rode in it a couple of times with my brother, and they shake really bad, and everything. So I was terrified of doing it, but I got to a point. I've always had a vision for my life and what it's supposed to look like, and I have two children. Mm-hmm. I have a three year old and I have a ten year old, and um, I just wanted better for their life. And in the small town that I was in, you were kind of capped out on what you could do and how much you could make. And I just felt like that wasn't enough. So I was kind of encouraged to look into getting my CDL. And then it became more of a challenge to me. And then I got it. And then it's just been uphill from there. Now, you know, I, I, I've been in the trucking game for six years. And I've been I've been interested in trucking for a long time. I, I just wanted it, it. And at that particular point in time, it really wasn't about the money as it is now. You know uh-huh. what I'm saying? They they say that 10 things, the 10, 10 reasons why people get into the trucking. And I just say out of the 10, I'll just say two. Number one is the money, of course. And number two is the travel. Yeah. Pretty, pretty much. You know, they 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 get in it, they get in it to travel, and then they get in it for the money. I, I don't see anything else in this millennial, in this millennial, 
for any other reason for anybody, especially a woman, to mm. get into trucking. Yeah. You know, I mean, number one, you, you know, you, 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 you have two kids. You're away from your kids weeks at right. a time. You know, and no woman don't want to be away from the kids uh, weeks oh. at a time. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, you know, you, you a, as a woman, you're getting, you're, you're driving into precarious areas. So, you know, a new, a new day, you in a new state, a new day, you in a new area that you don't even know nothing about. You know what right. I'm saying? So for, but for you though, you know, and you being for, uh, for nothing, <laughs> nothing over there. Like you like, you like, come on now. You like for nothing. <laughs> how, how do you how how do you how, how do you spend your time on the road like like what what do you do to keep keep yourself motivated in in this uh in this industry um i listen to first of all i listen to a lot of podcasts because uh, my is, mind i'm is, constantly is on lockout is lockout men podcast one of them oh yeah i watched you had my um oh, my okay. friend danielle on there i think her uh her IG is Mother Trucking Mom, I think oh, it is. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what's up. Okay, all yeah, right. I met her back at Prime in the beginning. Um, whoa, whoa, Prime. Yeah. Wait, wait. We ain't even say nothing about Prime. Okay, come uh, c- continue. We we about to <laughs> come on now. Continue. But yeah, I met her back at um at Prime and everything. So like that's um after you reached out to me, I watched her her interview and then I watched a couple other people interview and I. I was like, okay, I like this. This is dope. Because, you know, I had kind of wanted to start my own podcast myself, but I just like, you know, looking at other people and I kind of wanted to gain some gems. Because, like I said, I'm still a rookie in the game, so I wanted to see how other truck drivers were and, you know, how did they live their life and, you know, how they maintain, like, a, a happy work and home balance um, while out here and everything like that. So, yeah. But it just that that's what helps me stay motivated is just looking at other people that have done it before me and that are doing it now, especially like in my age group, people who have children, things like that. It's just like, okay, it's hard. Today is really hard because I really miss my babies. But, you know, I'm out here for a reason. I'm doing it for a reason. And, you know, they push through it, too. You know what I'm saying? So I just that's how I kind of keep my motivation up and keep pushing out here because it is hard sometimes to the point where you just be like you know what bump this are you I'm are, driving fork lifts <laughs> are, are you are are now you say you got two kids um I'm, you know I, I hope i'm not overstepping or anything like that but they're both they're both by the same uh father right unfortunately not no they're uh, not so as far as being a mother, being a mother and a truck driver and being away from your kids, how old are your kids? They're three and 10. Three and 10. All mm-hmm. right. So especially the 10 year old probably, you know, probably understand, you know, have a little bit of understanding. But as far as the three year old, I'm I'm sure you you feel some kind of way, especially, you know, three years old new you know new baby you want to be around your baby you know you want to see him walk talk and crawl and all that good stuff um but what about your support factor um does does the does the children's father step in to help while you're you know while you're over the road oh see you're definitely about to pull a heartstring at this moment i am whoo um I'm currently going through a child custody battle because I thought my support system was really strong because um, despite, you know, our relationships or our our own personal issues, we've always been able to come together when it came to the children. To the children, right. But um, recently I have found out how uh, spiteful and mean that they can really be. Uh, They have taken... And I say they because I recently found out that both of my children's fathers are have teamed up to take what? my children away from me. And I found out this information from one of my children's fathers. So, and then um, I have my 10-year-old. He lives with me. But my 3-year-old has been taken away from me temporarily until oh I can... Oh, my God. That I'm not neglectful or unfit, um, which, I mean... I already know God has it worked out. God has it handled because that is ridiculous. But 
you know. Um, yeah, so it, it's, it's like I, said, I have I have my mom. She's my mom and my two brothers. They've always been supportive. They've always been helpful um, in this situation. They've they've been there. They're, they're standing by my side now throughout this situation. Um, but yeah, I, I thought, you know, that I could depend on my, my children's fathers. And, and at this point, they're taking my career choice and using it against me. So at this point, I'm in a whirlwind of emotions because I just would have never thought that they would do something like that to me. Well, you know but what? I, knows, huh? I'm, I'm about to suggest that uh, suggest that you can. uh I don't know. Uh, I'm about to suggest uh, she trucking. You you familiar with with she trucking? No. Go go to see, go to she trucking on Facebook. Type in she trucking, and it's a it's a community of female truck drivers. Um, definitely jump on that. You know, they it might be somebody in there that might be going through the same stuff that you're going through right now. And then they're whole they they are a whole support group. So you could definitely, yeah, definitely get check them out. Yeah, you could definitely get uh get some support going on right there because that's 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 hurt that's that's kind of hurtful to hear that that both of the that both of the men are trying to come after you because you chose you 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 chose a career to to take care of your family and they're going to use that against you yeah that's crazy that's why i say it was it was very hurtful because like i said despite everything we've been through despite our own issues it it has never been like this they've never done anything like this anybody who knows me that you know i would live and die for my children you know what i'm saying so they knew that doing this would break me down they they knew that like this is not something that is just like, oh, I didn't mean to hurt you because there's no way you could have done this and not expect me to be hurt. Exactly. So, so exactly. yeah, like I just, I'm, like I said, I'm going day by day. You know, I'm taking it a step at a time. I've, I've hired a team of lawyers. So, at this point, I'm gonna leave it in God's hands because I know I'm a great mother. I know I'm not unfit, and I know exactly why I'm out here. Because if it wasn't for my children, I would have never stepped inside of a truck. So. Exactly. I'm just like, at this point, I'm just like, you know, I can't waste my time being bitter or and have any hatred towards them because at the end of the day, they going to have to deal with God. <laughs> <laughs> you say they're going to have to deal with God for doing that bullshit to you, man. So, right. all right. So we so we in the truck, you six months in and you just happened to mention Prime. So I'm assuming that you you went to Prime for your license as well or you I did. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you went to Prime and you got you trifected out. We don't even have to talk about the you know, we don't even have to talk about the schooling because I talked to plenty of people to get an idea on how the schooling was. But right. during your training, the the training part, the the fifty well now well now is now it's down to thirty, but before it was fifty. So what was your experience with the training and your trainer doing that 50,000 mile? Oh my God. Okay. Oh, so that okay. was Here the we worst we go. couple of months I've ever spent in my life. And only the only reason why is because I'll, I'll be completely honest with you. I'm very um, standoffish and antisocial, especially if I don't know you. So to be in a truck with somebody for months that you barely even know, and then they have to micromanage you. Oh my God, it drives you up a wall. But as far as the training, the TNT phase, I mean, it was very challenging for me because my trainer was very used to, he was very much used to training students who have actually drove the truck before, who had more experience with it and been on the road he wasn't used to training someone like me who had absolutely no experience didn't know what she was doing or anything like that and that that presented a, a major challenge in the beginning because it was like attitudes were flying everywhere because he was like oh my god you don't know nothing and i had to keep waking him up because he went to sleep a couple of times and i was just like yo i'm a rookie like you're not gonna watch me you're not gonna critique me like I could really kill you in your sleep. Like, <laughs> well, hold up, hold up, right quick, hold up. Let, let let me get this straight. He went to sleep. 
like like literally it, it was he in the jump sleep uh jump seat going to sleep or he was in the back going no to he sleep? was back in the bed wait a minute wait is this doing the team part or or the psp part no psd my psd trainer um we went out on the road for four days but most of that was uh pad uh pad training okay so so White guy, black guy, Hispanic guy. My PSD trainer was a black girl, but my TNT trainer was a white guy. Okay, so so the girl was the one that was going. Wait, was it the guy or the girl that was going to sleep? The guy was going to sleep. The girl was great. I loved her. We still talk to today. Like, it's I loved her. She was amazing. So let me ask you this, and I, you know, I I don't understand why uh why Prime does this. I mean, why not just why not just just have the training phase straight through you know um, why why what is the difference between the 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 PSD and the TNT like i don't get that you know what i the way it was explained to me is that PSD is supposed to prepare you for passing your um your CDL test and getting you ready to go over the road for that training so mm -hmm. that's what the PSD for the PSD is, you know, just to kind of give you a brief experience and a little, um, a little bit of life experience as well. And some people get lucky and their PSD trainers actually do go over the road as TNT trainers. I didn't get so lucky. My PSD trainer refused to do TNT. So I had to get a separate one that was willing to take somebody else over the road for an extended period of time. Mm. Yeah. So, so you so let's fast forward. You was able to trifecta out. You got your license. Did uh did you by chance like you know give like a summation or a summary of your training to you know to maybe safety or your your uh your uh manager or something like that? Because usually like when I was training and I got finished, they, you know, asked us to give us like, well, how was your training type deal? Did did they do that for you guys? Um, for PSD, yes. They asked how the training was and everything after we were um upgrading into actual company what well, company employees. They asked us. Okay. But TNT, they didn't ask us. <laughs> so did, so they didn't so you they didn't give a chance to find out how he was how he was treating you as far as as far as uh, uh the the training aspect you know what though uh most people what you would do in that situation is you would call your fleet manager and let your fleet manager know what's going on and you know basically if you feel like it's just not gonna work you try to get you another trainer but i'm a very outspoken person i didn't really need to have to, i didn't really need to have to go to the fleet manager and mm -hmm you know, have any conversations like that because when me and my trainer were butt heads or get into it, I let him know right then and there what my issue was. And I let him know right then and there that if we're going to continue having these issues then I would get off your truck and find someone, someone else. Right. And we had, we had a, we had a really, we had a really good understanding with each other. It was like, I understand because he was one of those guys that, you know, he had no filter. He said whatever came to his mind. And he this cursed the guy. Huh? This is the white guy. Yeah, like he was he was one of those guys like this is my truck. I say and do what I want. And you just have to comply. And it's like I get that. I, I respect the fact that this is your truck, but it's a certain way you're going to speak to me too. You're not going to talk down to me. You're not going to curse at me or anything in that nature either. You're not going to do any of that with me. I'm sorry, sir. Your truck or not, but you're not going to. Mm, that's crazy. Yeah, that's it's crazy how they be uh how, how they be trying to come at you like yo you my student like I never I never liked it that word student like I, oh he never said that he said um he kept telling me he was my boss and I'm like oh no baby we get paid by the same company like boss. You're not well, he must you know what you know what I you know why I think he probably came to you like that on that bullshit because the money that you was getting paid it for the training paid. it came out of his paycheck. Yeah, he had that conversation. He tried to have that conversation with me, but like I said, I'm very outspoken and I'm and I'm very much a smart ass. So it was like, you know, he tried to have that conversation with I'm your boss because I pay you. Um 
in that sense that you're trying to take it, I can see where you get that from. But, sir, the paycheck that you're talking about that you give to me comes from Prime, which we're both employees of. So you're just the middleman. <laughs> like, no, don't play with me. You call, you call that you're my, boy. You call that, you call that boy a middleman. <laughs> Yeah, like don't I? You know, like I said, I have the utmost respect for people, but you have to earn that. Like you don't just, you don't just like come up to me and just expect me to just give you all this respect that you're not giving me. Like no, like I'm I'm sorry. Like I appreciate the fact that you have 20 years in the game. I appreciate the knowledge that you give me and everything like that. But like I said, you're not going to talk to me crazy. Right, you're not going to talk down on you. That's 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 crazy right? in itself, right there. Right. Man, that's crazy. So now you, so so now you, you know, you you got over that, and now you driving the, you know, you driving the truck. Uh, what is the hardest part about being a truck, being a female truck driver, though? Is is it being away from your family? Is it the money, or is it backing up? Um, I would honestly say the hardest part about being a female truck driver. What have to be um, the being away from your family thing because backing up. I mean, that's just learn as you go. I'm not. Go I'm not gonna go lie to you. Like, it takes years to become a pro. Like, I'm getting better. I'm. I'm better. Like now, I can back up and I have to keep pulling up so many times. But um, the backing is just you're gonna mess up. Like even you have your good days, you have your bad days, and you you know this. But so it's just that's not it. Um, I would have said the men, but honestly, I'm gonna be real with you. Men are really helpful out here when they see female truck drivers. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we are. We are. <laughs> really helpful some, out here. Some some of them could be assholes though, but yeah, we we are. Yeah, yeah. There there are some assholes out here, but I've had more um, helpful ones than assholes. So okay. it's it's just you know, I think the most uncomfortable thing would be like this morning I dropped the load off at a uh, at a receiver, and um. I backed into the door, and when I was backing into the door, one guy was standing by the door. When I jumped out of the truck, it was ten guys <laughs> watching me. So I was just like, "That that's the, the uncomfortable part, because they have to watch and they have to stare, especially when you're small. They're like, how does she do it? Yeah, how she, did, why? <laughs> you, you, like, you, you like four foot nothing over there, and, 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 <laughs> and, and, and you just garner a crowd like you know like like wow how 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 is she doing it yeah like i feel like a unicorn like everywhere i go like i went to the after that i came to the truck stop to get me something to eat um and i had a headset on i was talking to my mom on facetime and then every truck driver that walked in there just was like staring at me like and then they asked me this question they see me get out of the truck they see me with a headset on and everything. Headset on and everything. They're like, "You drive trucks?" And I, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I would have said, "I, I would have said, don't the headset give it away?" Right. Come on now, <laughs> don't don't the headset give it away? I mean, the right. the the trucker's headset, don't it give it away? The, the <laughs> thing that the thing that I don't like about the headset, I mean, you know, I'm I'm gonna buy me one because I am transitioning into a in, into a new place uh soon so i will be i will be buying me a, a headset because you know they they are very 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 anal <laughs> about you know cell phone use in the truck so yeah. I, and i and this place that i'm going to that i'm transitioning to i i i like it a lot so yeah in order to stay appraised i'm gonna uh -huh. have to uh gonna have to jump and and jump on they jump on a bandwagon or get the fuck off so um right. but the headset though i mean i i've seen guys wear their headsets everywhere like bro yeah. you on you on vacation and you at the beach with the headset on for real yeah, I'm guilty of that. I'll come home and still have my headset on too. It's like you're so used to having it there. There's no other way to answer your phone at this point. <laughs> uh, y yes, yes, it is. Take the headset off and and answer your phone. I'm not going to no beach with the headset on. I'm not going to Cedar Point with the headset on. I, I can't do that. I cannot. Do I mean, that. I take it out now. I had to go buy some 
some um, AirPods for my phone because I was like, I. Oh my no, phone. you did not say AirPods. You you better not have the. Well, you know what? You're a woman, so yeah, you <laughs> you got an iPhone. You you have an I'll iPhone. T- well, you know, <laughs> yeah, you you have an iPhone. You you're a woman. Yeah, yeah. Women is women. Apple is for women. That's all I can say. If you're Why? a guy, that- if you're a guy with an iPhone, I'm gonna have to question your masculinity, brother. Why is that? Oh my god! I can't fuck with an iPhone. I no, I'm Android all the way. Oh, Android. Good. I cannot mess with the iPhone. iPhone. I mean, nothing wrong with Android. I, you know what? I had it. I I. I yeah, question my masculinity because, yes, I did have an iPhone back in a day, but I only had it for, like, two months before I switched over, switched back over to Android. I thought oh, my I was, God. What's your beef Apple? I, 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 I'm, I'm, not a, I'm, I'm not a fan of Apple. I, Apple products, period. I'm just not – I'm not a fan of the Mac. I'm not a fan of the iPod. I'm not a fan of the uh, iPhone. I'm just – I don't know what it is. But Android, <laughs> I fucks with the tablets. I fucks with the PC, and I got an Android phone. But the but but not all things Apple is bad. I did have the iPod. I love that. <laughs> And the only reason why I still got my iPhone 6 is because it has over thousands of my music that I can't even find no more that's on that phone. So I can't even I I, I can't even find none of the music that I got on there. I got I got country, rock, RB, soul, I got Al Green. <laughs> Yeah, I got that, you know. So that's the only that's the exactly exactly <laughs> that's the only reason why I still have a iPhone six is because it has all my music on there. Other than that, I don't use it. I, I don't I don't use it for the phone. I don't use it for none of the apps. The apps you 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 gotta go through hoops with the apps and all like that. With the Android, you click on it, damn damn boom. You don't want it no more, bam bam boom. And the fucking security. Mm-hmm. Oh man, password for the password on top of that. Password on top of that. What's your password on top of the password? The secu- they just trying to help you. That's all that is. They just trying to make you stay secure. That's all that is. Mm-mm. Look, just give me the just just give me the two authenticated passwords, my regular <laughs> password, and maybe another cold password. That's all I need. That's all I need. I don't need a password to give me letters, symbols, dot dot dots. Uh, capital letters, numbers. I don't. I'm 51 years old, man. I can't remember all that shit. That's what it is. It ain't. It ain't got nothing to do with women and all this stuff right here. It's just the fact that you older and you just don't have time. You just don't want to do all that. That's all it is. It's still a woman's phone, though. I don't care. Oh my it's goodness. It's, it's not. Phone. It's for like, you know. It's it's millennials still. and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? It's for like tech savvy ultra productive organizational type of people you know <laughs> listen to you trying to be all tech technical with this shit like yeah see the iphone is 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 it's is, is the everything phone that no no the, the iphone is just for women period that that's all it is that's all it is uh six months of driving how you know how has it been going for you so far any any embarrassing moments, uh, scare moments? What, what, oh God, you yes. know, how, how has it been going for you so far? Yes. Oh, I'm going to tell you the funniest moment I've had with my trainer. And it was the scariest moment of my life, like on this road. And I've been through a lot of stupid stuff. So we were in Tennessee, somewhere in Tennessee. And it was like, I want to say 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning or something like that. Now, you know, Tennessee is a little country. And then, you know, also, it's a little shady in certain parts, you know, when it comes to, you know, our particular skin color. So I made, I passed, I came out of a truck stop and I passed the interstate entryway because I forgot to turn my headlights on before I started driving. So I get to a point where I'm trying to turn around now. My GPS is saying 
that there's a turnaround spot right here, but the map is saying there's no street ahead. So at this point, I'm confused and I'm lost and I'm freaking out because I can't back this big old truck back up 10 miles, not 10 miles, 10 minutes. So I turn where the GPS told me to turn. Oh my God, when I tell you it was pitch black, it was nothing but trees back there. I couldn't see where my tandems were. It was crazy. So I'm like, at this point, I'm driving in the dark in some trees and some backwoods following the GPS, praying to God we don't get stuck in Timbuktu and they out there waiting to get me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My trainer wakes up and realizes how slow we're going and he turns around and he's like, he's freaking out. He's like, where are we? Oh my God. So we finally make it out of there. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, continue. We finally make it out of there. We finally see the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. <laughs> and he just, he's like, okay. Oh, I almost had a heart attack. He said, that's, he, he, uh, what he said? He said, I thought we was going to get butt raped or something back there. Like, I didn't know what was happening. <laughs> I had never seen this man so afraid in my life. Like, he was terrified. You hear me? And the thing was, I was too, because I was like, we're in the backwoods in Tennessee. I, you know, we could have fell in, because it was pitch black. I couldn't see where I was going past the headlights. It was it was terrible. It was very terrible. Like it was you it was kinda like some wrong turn type of stuff. <laughs> Hold on right quick. Okay. Sorry about that. My son, okay. uh, son was calling me to let me know about my food. But, okay. But, uh, but yeah, that's uh, now that was crazy. <laughs> I just knew that my trucking career was over at that point because I was like, this truck is gonna like slide into a ditch, or we're gonna get kidnapped. Or <laughs> Have you now being now being a female truck driver and 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 how small you are, um. How did you get how, how did you get over your fear of trucking? Oh, that was I got over my fear of trucking um I want to say about a week or two into it um when I first started my PSD training, my trainer had another student that was about to test out and she was from Georgia as well. She had foot Georgia. I, I just don't know. <laughs> just don't know, man. All all the females, like if if all all the females that I that I talk to and all like that, y'all y'all from Georgia. Y'all y'all can't be from Ohio, man. Like, damn it, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. it's great in Georgia. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we we know how we know how great it is in Georgia, you know, Atlanta, Georgia. Just saying. Anyway, anyway. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, so, uh, so continue with the continue with the story. Oh well, yeah, she she had a really heavy foot, so you know how you're driving like a regular car, and you just you know how you whip it in there. Mm -hmm. You just you just slinging your car. Well, she was slinging that truck, and that was like the first day I ever like that was the first day ever of me being in the truck. So when she backed up and we were they were teaching her how to uh, parallel park mm -hmm. the trailer and everything like that. So she was just swinging the truck. The truck went to shaking. It was so many times like that entire day. I felt like at any given moment that truck was gonna roll over and I was gonna die. So after about three, after about three days of that, I had got used to the shaking. I had got used to all of it. So I kind of, I felt better with it. Cause that was the main thing that intimidated me is the fact that it shakes so much. But, um, after that, after her, I think I was, shell, I was shell shot or shell shot or had PTSD or something like that. Cause now this truck can shake and rattle all they want to, and I'm good. Have you uh now being out there driving you 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 get a you know get a feel for the road and everything but you know the, there's been you know trucking accidents and we just and we just came up out of a you know out of a wild weather situation within a yeah. couple of weeks ago um and being that you only six months 
six months in, how, you know, how did you, have you seen any terrible accidents that probably might have, might, you know, put some thought in your mind? Like, is this is really what I want to do? Yeah. Um, I actually got stuck in that ice storm over there in Texas. Um, okay. so I saw the, the 250 vehicle pile up, um, and I saw how that, you know, how it was unavoidable, unavoidable, like they, because they were so tight and traffic so backed up, it was like, it was a domino effect. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, oh, okay. So they kind of reinforced, you know, the safety class where they tell you to keep a, a certain amount of distance between you and other cars and, you know, always have an out that way, you know, if there is an accident or whatever, you have enough time to stop. So it doesn't cause that 250 car uh, pile up. Now, in right. certain cases, like that one where that ice storm literally came out of nowhere, I can kind of understand it. And it, it did have me second guessing it because um, driving through there, because I had to push through Texas because Texas doesn't normally get that much snow. Mm -hmm. So they didn't have the resources that they needed to kind of clear the highways. Mm -hmm. So I had to drive through that snow. And, you know, me being a rookie, I hadn't had that many experiences of doing that. So trying to keep the trailer from jackknifing and things like that, it had me a little nerve wrecked. I was kind of like, I don't know if I want to do this because, you know, I didn't come out here to die. <laughs> exactly. I, I've seen, you know, going through Wyoming, I've seen trailers flipped over, trailers, tractor trailers in ditches on the complete opposite side of the highway, going in the opposite side of tra opposite direction of traffic. And I, I'm sitting there and I'm like, how did they do that? Like, what caused them to do that? Because I'm pretty sure nobody's like, oh, today I'm going to drive across the medium and run into a tree. Like, nobody's thinking that when they start their shift. So it's been a couple of times where I'm just like, I don't know if this is something that I want to do. Only, you know, talking out of fear. Because most of the time when I have, a moment where I just absolutely feel like my life is being threatened. It's when I'm coming down the side of a mountain mm. and hitting sharp curves and things like that. Now that, that will test all of your gangster. <laughs> <laughs> you, said, you said that'll test everything that you got, huh? Mm -hmm. I got you. I got you. All right. Well, there it is. There it is. Geron wait. Geronica B. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Wrong button. Hold on, there we go. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Snack size trucker. Man. What uh what what made trucking worth it to you? Like, you know, when you actually got into it, what's what made it worth it to you and what 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 do you want out of it? Uh I came into trucking with a plan and my plan was to um you know, stack my money and then eventually monopolize um, off of the trucking industry. Um, you know, so I, at this point, that, that plan has changed a couple of times as to what I wanted to do in the trucking industry. But at this point, it's pretty clear that I want to, you know, have my own trucking company um, of that sort. And it has honestly was what's made it worth it is what I can do with my kids and for my kids now. Like, there's nothing like this. There's, there's so many things that I can do that I wasn't able to do before because of it. And right. it's opened my eyes to the people around me. Now, like now me being out here has shown me who really, you know, who really has my best intentions at heart and who's really just there for the ride. So it is I, I, with all the bad days, I will honestly say it's been worth it. All right, snatch size. All right. Well, you are a citizen now. You know what I'm saying? So whenever you, whenever you want to come on, you know, and, uh, and chop it up with your boy, you know, you can definitely do that. Uh, you know, holler at me. You know, let's follow up. You know, follow up with each other. See where you at in the next six months or the year. Uh, well, Prime, though, I know we didn't get into too much about Prime. I guess we can... I guess we could save all of that, you know, again, when we uh, chop it up again, you know, so you could probably have a, you know, uh, have an idea on how Prime treating you being that you only there, you know, you just started with them. You know, oh, like that. actually, I'm no longer with Prime. I'm with JB Hunt now. Oh. Yeah. Well, we could, well, well I'll I tell you what, six months from now, we can, 
you know, may, maybe six months, seven, you know, maybe sooner. I don't know. We could we could talk <laughs> about we could talk about why you left Prime. You know, we could just leave those stories on. Uh, mm-hmm. we, could leave, we could leave those stories on the table for uh, for next time, though. Right. All right, all right. Well, you got it. You got it. Well, that's going to do it, everybody, for this episode of the Lockout Men Podcast Show. I really do appreciate you guys being here. I really do appreciate you guys supporting, watching. If you like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share. Hit that bell and that all button, or just hit that like button. That's all it is, you know, the like and the algorithm. You know, just come back. And enjoy the show and enjoy what I can get, you know, what I can bring to you guys. My guest, Veronica. I was about to call you Veronica. <laughs> Veronica, Veronica B, the snack size trucker. You know hey. what I'm saying? I appreciate you being here. And uh, guys, stay tuned for the next episode of the Lockout Men Podcast Show. We will talk to you guys later. The show here, get it in. Yeah. Party over here, get it in. Yeah. She like a liquor clear, get it in. Yeah. She get it from a deal, get it in. Yeah. Make it disappear, get it in. Yeah. Talk it in the real, get it in. Yeah. Now make it real clear, get it in. Yeah. Freak it with no fear, get it in. Yeah. Pop, pop, pop it in the butt, girl, get it in. Yeah. Jump on the double duck, girl, get it in. Yeah. Drop, drop, drop it double butt, girl, get it in. Yeah. Pump it up, butt lift, now downshift.